No, I'm not an almost HSA millionaire. Too bad. We opened our HSA only a few years ago when we came back to the US from Germany. But you, you could be an almost HSA millionaire. And that's what we're talking about today. Because let's face it, healthcare costs are only going in one direction, and that's up. And they're going up fast. HSA stands for Health Savings Account, by the way. So, did you know that if you're 25 and single, and you max out your HSA contribution every year until you turn 65, you'd have over $798,000 to put towards just your medical care and retirement. And that's a conservative estimate. And it's completely tax-free. By the end of this video, you'll know the best way to use your HSA so that you get the most bang for the buck. You'll know how much you could have in your HSA by the time you retire, and you'll know the new HSA limits for 2022. For loyal subscribers and viewers, welcome back. We love you guys. And for those of you new to Diamond Nest Egg, welcome to the number one place to learn about money, insurance, and retirement. I'm Jennifer, first generation American, and I've spent most of my life in finance. Started working at banks like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs at the age of 17, and graduated top of my class from NYU and Harvard Business School. And now I work on all things personal finance with young professionals and employees at places like Bloomberg, WeWork, and March McLennan. The easiest way to understand an HSA, a health savings account, is to think of it like a medical IRA. In a nutshell, it's a savings account with tax benefits designed for people with a high deductible health plan, an HDHP, that can be used to pay for qualified medical expenses both now and in the future. Think retirement. We'll talk about high deductible health plans briefly later in the video because you'll need one of those in order to open an HSA. First though, let's focus on the HSA itself and the best way to use it. So as I said, the easiest way to understand an HSA is to think of it like a medical IRA. And the best way to use an HSA, the ideal financial strategy for making the most out of it is to actually not use it right away. Basically, you put the money into your HSA, max out the annual contribution every year, and invest those HSA funds. Don't spend them down immediately. Let the money in your HSA grow over time, over the long term with the market, just like you do with the money in your normal retirement account. Hey, there's no guarantees in life, but history has shown that over the long term, markets have trended upwards. So no in and out of the market short term or day trading. That's not what your HSA money is for. And in the ideal situation, you don't spend down your HSA money until say retirement or when you absolutely need to years later. Why? Because here's the HSA loophole that a lot of people aren't aware of. There's no deadline for HSA reimbursements. So long as those expenses were incurred after you opened your HSA and you've kept the receipts. Do not lose the receipts or you will not be reimbursed. So say that you paid for $2,000 of qualified medical expenses out of pocket this year because you had the money to do so. You've had your HSA all year and you've kept all your medical receipts. You don't have to take the reimbursement this year. You can simply leave your HSA funds invested in the market, watch that money compound over the years, and then reimburse yourself the $2,000 of qualified medical expenses that you paid out of pocket this year in say 10 years time or even 20 years time. So long as you still have your receipts and the government hasn't closed this HSA loophole. If you do follow the strategy, and I can't say this enough, Keep meticulous records of your receipts and don't lose any of them. You just want to have them on hand in case the IRS ever asks you for them. So how much can your HSA funds grow over time if you stay invested in the market for the long term? Well, enough for you to be an almost HSA millionaire if you start early enough, like some of our young clients. You guys know I love charts and numbers, so let's do an illustration on the growth potential of your HSA over a 20, 30, and 40 year period. But before we do this, if you're enjoying this video, please give that thumbs up and the subscribe button a gentle tap. We'd really appreciate it. So HSA growth potential. Let's assume you're 25 and single, and in January 2022, you decide you're going to open an HSA because of the alarmingly fast rate that healthcare costs are rising. So you max out your HSA contribution every month in 2022. 
The IRS has increased the HSA contribution limit for 2022 to $3,650 if you're single and $7,300 if you have a family. If you're 55 or older, you can contribute an additional catch-up contribution of $1,000 annually. So, 25 and single in this example means that you're capped at the HSA contribution limit of $3,650 in 2022, or $304.16 monthly. Now, if we assume that one, the IRS never increases the HSA contribution limit ever again, unlikely, but it makes the calculation easier. So that's what we'll assume. So you basically put $304 every month to HSA from the age of 25 to the age of 65. And we assume two, you leave your money in your HSA and don't start spending it down until you turn 65. And we assume three, you invest the money in your HSA. Yes, I said invest. And that money grows at the annual average inflation adjusted market rate of return of 7%. You would have over $798,000 in your HSA by the time you retire at age 65 to put towards your healthcare costs. And hopefully that'll be enough because according to Fidelity Investments, an average retired couple age 65 right now could need approximately $300,000 saved after tax to cover healthcare expenses in retirement. And we're talking about 40 years from now. If you're thinking, man, I should have started when I was 25, well, all's not lost. Using the same assumptions as before, maxing out your HSA with a monthly contribution of $304.16 until you turn 65, leaving your money in your HSA and not spending it until you turn 65, and investing it at the annual average inflation adjusted market rate of return of 7%. If you start doing this at age 35, you'd still have over $371,000 in your HSA by the time you retire at age 65. And if you start this at age 45, you'd have more than $158,000. Keep in mind, this total value here doesn't even include any potential employer match towards your HSA. Because yes, some employers do have an HSA match, just like they have a retirement match. If your employer has an HSA match, you'd have even more than this. The really great thing about your HSA is that it's triple tax advantage. One, you're not taxed when you put money into your HSA. Two, you're not taxed on the money that grows in your HSA. And three, you're not taxed when you take money out to pay for qualified medical expenses both now and in the future. So basically, you don't pay any taxes at all on the money that you put in, this column here. And you don't pay any taxes at all on this money here when you pull it out. As long as you use your withdrawal for qualified medical expenses as defined by the IRS. And that's why using an HSA to pay for medical expenses in retirement is better than using your normal retirement accounts, like your personal IRA or your company 401k, because with these other retirement accounts, you either pay taxes when you put money in, or you pay taxes when you take the money out, regardless of what you use that money for. There are a few things you need in order to qualify for an HSA. The first thing you need to qualify for an HSA is a high deductible health plan, an HDHP. You can purchase this on your own or get it via your employer. A high deductible health plan, as the name suggests, is a health plan with a high deductible. The deductible is the amount you have to pay with your own money for covered healthcare services before your insurance starts paying. For 2022, the minimum HDHP deductible is $1,400 if you're single, and $2,800 if you have a family. And the maximum out-of-pocket costs for an HDHP are $7,050 if you're single, and $14,100 if you have a family. Out-of-pocket costs include anything that is not reimbursed by the HDHP, such as deductibles, co-insurance, and co-payments for covered services, plus all costs for services that are not covered. It does not, however, include your monthly premiums. Before you go running to sign up for an HDHP though, just so that you can open an HSA and save up an extra few hundred thousand dollars for healthcare and retirement, you first have to make sure that an HHP is actually the right health plan for you. Check out one of our most popular health insurance videos on the channel. It goes through my not so many ski accident during the pandemic and the six questions you should ask yourself to determine whether or not an HDHP is the way to go for you. Now, if you don't know whether your current plan is an HDHP, call your HR department or the insurance company 
if you've purchased this on your own. The second thing you need to qualify for an HSA is to make sure that you have no other health coverage. There are a few exceptions to this per IRS rules, which would just get us digging into the weeds. So the thing to do here is this, if you have an HDHP and you have other health coverage, speak with your employer or your prospective HSA provider if you're purchasing this on your own and see if this other health coverage would disqualify you from opening an HSA. And the third thing you need to qualify for an HSA is to make sure that you are not enrolled in Medicare. You can contribute to an HSA after you enroll in any part of Medicare, even if you're covered under an HSA qualifying plan. Also, be careful not to confuse an HSA with an FSA. With an HSA not using the money, investing it, and spending it down in retirement for your healthcare needs is the most financially sound strategy because of all the HSA tax benefits. But also because you don't have to use it or lose it. The money in your HSA belongs to you and it belongs to you forever, not your employer, even if you originally opened your HSA with them and then left the company. With an FSA, it is use it or lose it. Whatever money is left over at the end of each year in your FSA is pretty much gone. And if you were to leave your current company, your FSA funds would also be gone because they belong to your employer, not to you. Check out this video here for more details on HSAs versus FSAs and HRAs. Or our top ranked playlist on the channel here on all things life insurance. If you're interested in taking that next step in protecting your loved ones and building generational wealth. Guys, HSAs, retirement, your money, that's complex stuff with all these moving parts. Everyone's financial journey is different. There's no one size fits all solution. Shoot us an email at jenniferdiamondnestig.com if you wanna simplify all of this and hit your financial goals and grow your nest egg quicker rather than slower. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to give that thumbs up and the subscribe button a gentle tap. We'll be back next week with another money-saving wealth building video just for you.